Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Aviv Rotman. I'm a data scientist at Taboola and I wanted to tell you a story. So um, it was a couple years ago, I won't say how, may, how, how long ago, because um, a uh, gentleman never tells his age. Um, and I was a graduate student at the Weizmann and I'd uh, just received a bunch of experimental data as a CSV and we were all excited and my advisor came up to me and said, okay, I want us to come tomorrow to the, <coughs> to the lab and we'll sit together and we'll do some exploratory data analysis because I'm so excited about the new data. Uh, so we uh, came to the lab the next day and my advisor appeared with no computer. Uh, so he was a uh, sort of looming over my shoulder, uh, watching me uh, analyze the data. And lo and behold, it was terrible. It was one of uh, the worst experiences in my uh, graduate studies because nothing worked, okay? I had to write um, a lot of code to do any small thing with the data. And at the end of the day, my brother came and he said, um, okay, listen, um, either you're not using the right programming language and you need to move to MATLAB, and uh, I didn't want that to happen, or um, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. So um, I set out to understand what I was doing, um, and I uh, stumbled upon um, this uh, uh, paper, which is uh, Tidy Data by Hadley Wickham. Uh, Hadley Wickham is um, uh, one of the main contributors to the R project. And, um, and he uh, has a bunch of things to say about how to tidy data before you do data analysis. Now, I know that uh, cleaning data isn't the sexiest of subjects and we usually procrastinate it and say, oh, no, don't worry, just one more analysis and I'm done. I don't need to do this ever again and I won't need to look at this code ever again. But in the end, you spend like three more months working on the same code and you don't understand anything you wrote and, um, and it's terrible. So uh, I decided to get into it. And, um, and uh, the reason I think that you guys should get into it is because, uh, you know, as data scientists, we have um, sort of a dirty little secret that most of the time we don't spend analyzing and modeling data, we spend it cleaning data. So um, if, uh, if we spend so much time on that, then I think uh, it's worth uh, getting into. Um, also, um, once you have a familiar data structure, that is uh, what we'll learn how to do. Um, it's easy to communicate your data with another person. It's easy to look at anyone else's data set. Um, things are sort of more understandable. And also, you don't need to think of anything from scratch. I know what tidy data looks like. I, I, can, uh, I have a set of tools to bring it into a tidy form. I'm done. And um, probably last but uh, most important is that there are tools that are based on tidy data. And once you, your data is tidy, you don't need to do half of the work. Okay. So what does tidy data look like? This is not tidy data. This data isn't tidy. So in order to, let's say, understand which treatment was better in this data set, which uh, you can see a bunch of people, um, John, Jane, and Mary, and um, they, all of them went, uh, or not all of them, but they, uh, some of them underwent uh, treatment A and treatment B, I would actually need to go into the column name and extract the, the data I needed. Um, and that's not fun and it's pretty hard. So what is tidy data? Um, <clears throat> tidy data, uh, in, in tidy data, each variable forms a column. So what's a variable? It can be a string, it can be uh, uh, something numerical, um, as long as it's not connected to anything else, it's its own variable. And each observation is a row. So um, what is an observation? If I'm in time series data, then a, then a time point is an observation. If I'm in click stream data, then an event is an observation. And if I'm doing experimental data, then maybe a patient or another experiment is an observation. Um, so as long as we, as uh, our data adheres to these three roles, our data is tidy and it'll be easier for us to do whatever we want. Um, so this is the same data set as before, just that it's now tidy. Do you see? Uh, <laughs> so, um, so the reason that it's uh, tidy data is also called long format is because you can see that the data is split up into um, so that the names repeat themselves uh, across uh, the new treatment column. Okay. Um, so now, if I wanted to get the most, the best, um, the best uh, treatment for each patient, I would just uh, select the max for and group by the patient name. <clears throat> Um, okay, so how do I tidy data? So Hadley Wickham, the guy I talked about before, um, created a, a package called Tidier, and uh, he did all our work for us. Just the only thing is that Tidier is in R, and we're not R programmers, so um, no worries, that's what I'm here for. Uh, we'll go over 
um, <coughs> the five scenes, sins of messy data. And I'll show you uh, the tools that we need to use in order to get our data to be tidy. And, um, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to have tidy data for the rest of your life. <coughs> One thing to say about, uh, about uh, messy data. I'm going to show you five uh, examples of messy data, but messy data takes many forms and it's, uh, um, it can bring unhappiness in many ways, but hopefully the tools that I'll show you will be able to, you'll be able to, um, recognize, uh, the messy data and, uh, deal with it yourself. Okay. So here we have a data set, um, from, uh, the Pew center that's trying to relate, uh, religion to income in the U S. Um, and, uh, this is our first set where the column headers are values uh, and not variable names. So we'd actually like to know things about uh, the level of income, right? Let's say I wanted to know the, uh, mo the most uh, frequent uh, level of income for each religion. So in order to do that in this data set, um, so in order to get to, uh, to this uh, table, I need to do this. So First, I need to split um, all the columns that have to do with the frequency into another data set. I need to go, I need to find the max for max column for each row. Then I need to go over the uh, each row, find the, uh, ID each column, the ID of each column, create a new series with the column name, and finally connect it to the religion. Um, this might not be the most efficient uh, way to do this. I may be wrong. I just wrote this uh, yesterday in a couple of minutes, but um, it's more or less what you need to do. Okay, um, so back to our data set, let's say I wanted to do this easy. So I wanted to make this easier. So how would I tidy the data set? So in order to do that, I need a tool called melt. <laughs> so what does melt do? It, um, it melts down columns uh, into um, variables. So let's say I have uh, um, a data set with uh, first and last name, height and weight. Um, and I want, uh, and I think that height and weight are actually variables and not, uh, and, and, uh, I mean, they're actually values and not variables. So I melt them down and I just, uh, do melt. I'd say that first and last are indexes. So I don't want to melt them. And lo and behold, I'll have a data set, um, where height and weight are now, uh, columns. They are now not a column. They're now variables in a new column. Um, and, uh, and the values that they had before are now in a third column and our data is long and easy to use. So how would I do that here? I just uh, keep religion as an, uh, uh, an index variable and um, I create a new column named income and a new column named frequency and our data now looks like this. Um, so you can see that all the religions are repeated uh, the number of times that uh, <laughs> that the uh, the income is a uh, uh, that the, the number of times um, of the income category, and uh, we now have a new frequency column, and uh, we can easily uh, get this table by um, grouping by religion and uh, finding the max uh, of uh, the frequency variable, and then uh, um, using those uh, indexes as a uh, to subset the table. <clears throat> so here's another data set. Um, it's uh, the same sin um, where the variable, the column names are are uh, values and not variables. It's uh, data from the Billboard 100 uh, um, charts in in the U.S. And every uh, column you hear that says uh, first week, second week, third week is the rank of uh, a certain song um, by uh, Destiny's Child or Santana. Um, in that week. Um, the only thing is that if I wanted to look at this data, it would be very hard because uh, a lot, once a song goes out of the chart, it's now filled with uh, um, very, um, NA, 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 NA. And um, it's just uh, really hard to look at because it's very, very, very wide. So I wanna go to long format. I wanna, I wanna tidy this data. Um, so what I'll do again is I'll melt. This time I have more, many more IDs. And, um, and now we have, uh, again, the data in, um, in long format and you can see the songs are split um, into many, many rows. And now I have, um, I have a week, a rank, and I even uh, used uh, some of the columns to create uh, the date the week started. Um, but this is still not tidy. Um, why is that? Because uh, we have um, a couple of uh, different types of data in the same table. So this is more of a relational database sort of uh, um, tidiness because um, uh, some people might 
not care that um, they have two types of data in the same table. But let's say you are going to edit this data and you're afraid that you'll edit one row, you won't edit another, and then you'll have two points of truth. Then you want to keep all of, uh, all of uh, let's say, the data about the songs in one table and all the data about the ranks in another table. Um, so it's pretty easy. All you need to do is create a new songs table with, um, with an ID. And um, this is the new songs table. And um, I'll create a new ranks table with uh, the ID as the identifier for the songs table. And then um, I have one point of truth. <clears throat> now, um, the third type of, uh, of uh, messy data is um, where I have multiple variables stored in one column. Uh, what does that mean? So you can see here again that uh, we have data uh, regarding uh, tuberculosis and its uh, prevalence in different countries in the world uh, in, over a, a number of years. And um, we have columns with uh, the different types of people that uh, we looked at but it's both um, uh, the sex of the person and the age bucket they fall into. So it's male, 0 to 14, male, 15 to 24, and so on. Um, but now let's say I wanted to understand what's the, what's the most prevalent uh, age people contract tuberculosis um, for, for both sexes, and I need to split the table into two. I need to do what I did before, what I showed you before, of uh, finding the index of the most prevalent uh, column. And, um, and it would take me a lot of time and it wouldn't scale well if I, had, uh, if I wasn't looking at sex as opposed to looking at something like ethnicities and there were multiple uh, categories um, to split by. So I want to tidy this data. Um, so again, we'll melt it, but this time we'll also split the column. So we'll split it into sex and age. And, um, and now uh, we have a nice uh, uh, tidy data set and it would be very easy for us to do that kind of uh, <clears throat> to do that, um, that kind of uh, analysis, uh, we'll just need to uh, group by sex and uh, find the max. Um, so the fourth kind of uh, uh, messy data set is um, uh, pretty similar to the last, just that in, the, um, in this case, uh, again, we have uh, variables that are uh, appear in the column names, but we also have uh, a column that appears as values in a, in a, in a variable. Um, this is a uh, temperature data from a, from a meteorological center, uh, center in uh, Mexico. And um, I have the minimum, the maximum temperature for each day, uh, for each day, uh, for five months in um, 2010. Now, the minimum and maximum temperature are stored in different rows. And um, if I want to compare, let's say, uh, ranges or something like that, it will be hard for me. I need to backtrack uh, every row. I need to uh, maintain order and so on. So um, I'd also, I'd like to melt the, the data so that I can look at the days uh, as different rows, but I'd also like to look at the uh, min and max temperature as different columns. So uh, I need to do the opposite of melting and uh, that's a pivot. And probably most of you guys know it from uh, Excel. Um, so what does pivot mean? It means I'll take, um, an ID, I'll take uh, a column and a bunch of values and I'll split it that uh, column into uh, new columns based on the values of the column. So um, you can see here, um, I have foo, bar, and baz. So I'll keep foo as, uh, as my ID. I'll create new columns based on the values of bar and uh, the values will be based on baz. Um, <clears throat> so how will I do that with uh, with our data? So first I melted the data so that I have um, the dates in different rows. And I also um, created a new date column, which just has all the day, month, and year in, uh, in one value. And now I'll pivot uh, the element column. Um, so I'll pivot and I'll, uh, the IDs will be ID and date. Uh, the column I'm pivoting is element and the values are value. And, um, and now we have uh, um, the maximum temperatures in different columns and it's uh, easy for me to do uh, mathematics between them or whatever I want to do. Uh, the last form of, uh, of uh, messy data is um, <coughs> data that appears in multiple tables. So um, let's say I have um, uh, data regarding names in Illinois for the years 2014 and 2015, and they, the 2014 appears in one table, and one CSV in 2015 appears in another CSV. 
Um, so I could easily find, let's say, uh, the prevalence of the name Logan in uh, which uh, year it was more prevalent. Um, I would just load both, uh, both data sets into two, uh, <coughs> two data frames and then I compare the two and, um, and I decide which of the data, which of the years was, uh, was uh, higher. But let's say I also had data for 2013 and for 2016, it would become uh, more complicated. And as, uh, as I added more data, it would be, uh, become more complicated. But it's easy to fix this in Python. I just loop over the data sets and I uh, load the year um, from the name into a new column. And um, an easy peasy, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a tidy data set. Um, so I'll just uh, go over again uh, all the tidy data sets we saw. Um, we have uh, column headers of variables. Our values are not variable names. We have multi multiple types of uh, data in, uh, in uh, one table. We have um, uh, uh, variables with um, uh, columns with uh, multiple variables. And we have uh, variables that are stored both in rows and in columns. And uh, finally, we have uh, uh, cases where um, a single data set is saved in multiple tables. Um, so um, why did I uh, go over all these things? Uh, why is tidy data, tidy data so, uh, so nifty? Um, because uh, once your data is tidy, you can use a very limited set of uh, commands or um, as uh, they're called in uh, the tidy data sort of universe uh, verbs to do whatever I need uh, with my data. Um, it might be, it might be um, a bit counterintuitive, but um, as, a, as when we do analysis, we don't do many complex things. We either filter rows, we select columns, we mutate columns into new values, or we summarize rows. Um, that's the four basic things that we do at all times. And um, so let's say, uh, I wanted to uh, understand, uh, I'm looking at uh, the same data that we we're looking at before, the uh, main frequencies in, uh, in Illinois. So let's say I wanted to look at the mean and uh, the number of uh, babies and, uh, and um, the number of names. Then I would just uh, group by year and, uh, and look at um, these uh, aggregated functions over the frequency variable. Let's say I wanted to do something a bit more flashy then um, I'd filter out anything that's under 400 and then I'd group by name again and I'd uh, take the frequency variable and I'd do a mean over it and a count and then I'd, I'd uh, order by the mean and I'd be able to do all that in one one-liner, which is not only in one line, it's also very easy to read and it's easy to reproduce. So I could give this to a friend and they'd be, oh, that's what you did. Cool. Um, um, the other thing that um, I like about tidy data is that it allows to use grammar of graphics. So grammar of graphics is sort of a framework uh, used in multiple uh, packages. In Python, it's used in Seaborn and Altair and Plot9. Um, in R, it's used in, in uh, the very popular uh, package called uh, ggplot. And um, grammar of graphics allows you to do very complex graphics with very little code but it depends on the fact that your data is tidy. Otherwise, you can't really do anything. Um, so let's say I wanted to create, um, using the billboard data set, I wanted to create a plot for each genre and for uh, to compare the week and the rank of uh, each song. And I wanted to color the songs by how long they were. So I would only need uh, um, two or three rows, um, which you can see here. This is in Seaborn, so it's even longer. And, um, and I get this data set. I get uh, this... Um, this image and I didn't like create each of these uh, images uh, on its own. Um, I just uh, told uh, told my uh, my Seaborn to do that for me. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say that all the um, all this uh, talk was based on uh, again uh, Hadley Wickham's tidy data and a bunch of uh, blog posts that translated this to Python. And um, thank you, and I'll take questions. So you were showing mostly tabular data. Yeah. Uh, what about heraldical data? Something that comes, let's like, say, from XML. If you have like higher, this, this belongs to this, this so on so So uh, Pandas uh, deals with that uh, quite elegantly um, with hierarchy in your data frames. Um, um, I don't know if it's that useful to, to 
continue using hierarchy when you're doing when you've translated into a table. But um, if that's what floats your boat, then uh, you can you have a hierarchy of data frames in pandas. Also, uh, what separates top types of observations? So I guess it's a matter of taste because um, sometimes I wouldn't want to uh, split up observational units, but it's when you think about a database. So you think about like let's say um, employee data and then uh, and then uh, performance. So you'd split the data about the employee and then you and then you'd uh, record the performance because performance can appear more than once, but an employee can only appear once. So it's so it's like a, a relational database. Yes. Um, the question was when when uh, do you consider to refactor the the code that generates the data so that it generates it in tidy form? I think that having tools that tidy the data, you don't really need to consider the form the data is going to appear in before you uh, when you write it. Just tidy it before you start working, and uh, and that's it. Okay, thank you guys. <laughs>